Hey, it's Kate from Free Nursing Smarter. Welcome to this reading practice section. Let's do some T's reading practice questions. I'm in my Pre-Nursing Smarter T7 question bank. I'll have a link to it in the description box. And we're going to be doing 10 random practice questions. If you need a great T study guide, go ahead and check out my video or my blog post that breaks down the best way to study for T's reading. And if you want full practice exams, you can check out either my full program or just my question bank section. All right, let's jump into some practice questions. Question number one. She was cool as a cucumber. What type of figurative language is this? Choose only one best answer. A, exaggeration. B, metaphor. C, simile. D, personification. She was as cool as a cucumber. The answer is simile. So as is a clue. Similes are comparisons that use like or as. So anytime you see like or as, you want to start thinking, oh, this is probably a simile. Exaggeration, you know, maybe it's a little bit of an exaggeration. However, there's a better answer because of as, and it's not a huge amount of exaggeration. The comparison here with a person to a cucumber shows you that there's probably a better answer. Metaphors don't use like or as. And personification is not correct. If the cucumber were being compared to a person, then that might be right. But in this case, it's a person being compared to something else. And personification is when an inanimate object, so a non-human, is given human qualities. So in this case, simile is the best answer. And on the tease, you might be asked directly about figurative language, or you might need to apply it in a passage or use context clues with it. This is just a direct application of being able to define and apply different types of figurative language. Question two, use the passage below to answer the following question. Since this is the tease, we're gonna jump to the question. Where might this passage be found? Choose only one best answer, and you can skim the answer options. I'm going to read them aloud. A, in a medical journal for orthopedic surgeons. B, in a brochure for an immune boosting supplement. C, in a textbook for first-year college students, or D, in a newspaper article about the immune system health of Americans. So this passage is going to be about tone and audience, and we might not need to read the full passage. So I'm going to read it in case you're in the car or the shower, not looking at a screen, but you can also just pause and skip ahead here because you might be able to get by without reading the full passage. The body has several body systems that function as a unit. Most people understand that body systems work together, but some do not understand the full complexity. The immune system and the skeletal system work together. The skeletal system contains different types of bones. One type, long bone, is often made of compact bone tissue. Instead of the special type of hard bone, there's a type of spongy bone called bone marrow. Inside the bone marrow, immune cells called lymphocytes are made. Lymphocytes are white blood cells. Broadly speaking, there are types, B cells and T cells. B cells are more basic and they help guard the body. They can specialize either into plasma cells or memory cells. B cells mature in the bone marrow, that's what the B stands for. The thymus gland is part of the endocrine system, which shows the complexity of the body system's interactions. The immune system and skeletal system function together to make lymphocytes, but they also interact with many other body systems. The body is an amazing system that more people should appreciate. And the answer is... C, a textbook for first-year college students. For this passage, you might be able just to skim, and you probably wouldn't need to read this because you can see that it's written at a pretty basic level. It's just giving information. So it's probably not a medical journal for orthopedic surgeons. There's not a lot of jargon. So though this passage discusses bones, it's written more for a lay audience or a general audience. There's very little medical jargon, no technical specifics, and an orthopedic surgeon should know that the skeletal system contains different types of bones. In a brochure for an immune-boosting supplement, it's incorrect. It's about the skeletal system. It discusses immunity, but there's no persuasive call to action telling you, you know, to go buy a supplement or suggesting that a supplement might be great. In addition, this passage is pretty fact-based, and brochures often have opinions and biases, and they're often trying to persuade you to do something. This is fairly direct, expository passage. Option C is the best answer. 
The passage is informative with fact-based examples. It educates the reader and uses everyday language. So a textbook for first-year college students is the best answer. And then option D is incorrect because the passage does not discuss the overall immunity of the American people. Newspaper article would have very likely the same tone as this textbook. It would likely be fact-based, informative, and written for a general audience. But the topic of the immune system health indicates that there is probably a better answer. Question number three, use the passage below to answer the following question. We're going to jump to the question, what type of graphic illustration would best communicate the main points of the passage? And we see the same passage again about body systems functioning together as a unit. Choose one best answer. A, a label diagram of the axial skeleton's bones. B, a label diagram of the cells of the adaptive immune system. C, a label diagram showing a cell's journey from marrow to thymus. D, a label diagram showing stem cell differentiation. We know that this is about body systems working together and it talks about the skeletal and immune systems. So the answer is C. This shows how the skeletal system is connected to the immune system. So the marrow is in bone and the thymus is a gland that matures T cells. That's the best answer here. A, you know, maybe could work, but it's not the best answer because it's just on the skeletal system and there's no immune system. Similarly, option B just has the immune system and no mention of the skeletal system or how they're related or linked. Stem cell differentiation could work, but because this passage is about the immune and skeletal systems, there's a better answer here in C. This shows you how if you have multiple questions about the same passage, you might not need to read the passage every time, and you'll want to look for the main idea, the types of examples, and be sure to read every single question option because D is a pretty good answer, but there might be a better answer. And so it's important to check all your answer options and rule them out, especially if you're managing your time. Question four. Follow the steps below to create a new word. What is the new word? Choose one best answer. Okay. Step one, start with the word cleft, C-L-E-F-T. Add an A after the E. Remove the C. Move the F to start the word. Remove the T. What is the new word? A, left. B, felt. C, Flee, D, talc. Okay, here's where some strategy comes in. Show you the answer. The answer is flee. So notice the last step, remove the T. Can you start there? Cleft, our starting word has one T. So if we remove the T and it's the last step and there's no add back a T, we know that A is not correct because it has a T. B is not correct because it has a T. D is not correct because it has a T. You can also see that there's a remove the C as well. So talc would also be incorrect. You also see that move F to the start of the word. So we didn't follow the exact steps. We looked for cues in the word. Sometimes for these questions, you can just start at the end. You can scan. You can see if there's a remove a letter and no add back the letter to help you rule out answer options and save time because these questions are just tricky time wasters. This strategy might not always work exactly this well. By scanning the answer options and scanning the steps, you can see if you can save some time. Question five, which of the following best describes a text with step-by-step -step instructions? Choose one best answer. A, expository. B, directional. C, logical. D, procedural. The answer is procedural. Option A is incorrect because expository passages often inform or educate. They usually don't give exact steps. B is incorrect. You don't need to know the word directional for the T's. Don't worry about it. C is incorrect. This logical on the T's is used to describe arguments or inferences. It's not a type of passage you'll need to know on the T's. And then procedural text is great to know for the T's. This is a type of text that gives directions and instructions. Question six. 
Which of the following is often used in tertiary sources to interpret information? Choose all answers that apply. A. Graph. B. Chart. C. Diagram. D. Data. The answers are graph, chart, and diagram. Tertiary sources are curated. They're not primary. They're not secondary. They're third-degree sources. And charts, graphs, and diagrams are all used to organize data. They present analyzed data, which is great for a tertiary source. In addition, graphs and charts and diagrams can be used to synthesize information across multiple sources. Raw data is not interpreted and synthesized. These are great terms to be familiar with for the T's, knowing tertiary sources, knowing how data is synthesized. You will see charts and graphs in the T's reading section, and you might be asked about direct qualities about, you know, good data, good sources, or you might be asked to work directly with a chart, graph, or diagram and pull out what that information is saying. Consider the passage below for the following question. Okay, we're going to skip to the question. Which statement contains an opinion of the author? Okay, opinion questions are great because a lot of times they have opinion keywords. So let's look at our answer options. Choose one best answer. A, every morning I get up, stumble to the kitchen, and hand grind coffee beans. B, at work in the afternoon, I wish for a second cup. C, research shows that people who drink coffee have lower rates of certain cancers. And D, obviously, coffee is a great wake-up call. You can answer this question without reading the passage. Maybe you already know the answer. I'm going to go ahead and read the passage, though, just in case. Every morning, I get up, stumble into the kitchen, and hand grind coffee beans. Often, I'm so tired that I end up flinging beans across the kitchen. I work in the afternoon. I wish for a second cup. Nevertheless, nothing feels more satisfying in the morning than drinking a delicious cup of coffee. Obviously, coffee is a great wake-up call. In fact, everyone should consider drinking a cup each morning simply for the enjoyment, not just the health benefits. Research shows that people who drink coffee have lower rates of certain cancers. The answer is... Obviously, coffee is a great wake-up call. That keyword, obviously, expresses a very strong opinion. It removes all doubt and expresses excessive clarity. So when you're asked about opinion questions on the T's, a lot of times you'll be looking for judgments on value or worth or opinion keywords that remove all doubt and leave like no wiggle room or room for nuance. That shows that the author has a very specific point of view that's probably not accurate. Option A is incorrect. Every morning can remove certainty. There's a better option. Option B is incorrect. The author is expressing a preference in I wish. However, it's not saying a blanket general statement or um, a very strong opinion. A blanket statement would be, you know, this applies to everybody. Everybody needs to drink coffee. B is a good guess, but there is a better answer. Option C is incorrect um, because it has even wiggle room or room for doubt. It doesn't say all cancers, every cancer. It says certain cancer. It doesn't say cures cancer. It says lower rates. So it has some nuance. Option D, it obviously it's removing all doubt. For these types of questions, if possible, you may not need to read the entire passage. You'll definitely want to try to save time and practice with this. So do practice questions, get familiar with the keywords you might be looking for, because this passage contains several statements that could be considered opinions. So read the question first, then look at the answer options. You might have, if you jumped right into the passage where you saw the wish or the, in fact, everyone should consider drinking a cup. That's also, that would have been a great answer as well. So looking at how you can make the test work for you is very important. Question eight, which of the following provides a general overview of a text? Choose one best answer. A, introduction, B, appendix, C, glossary, D, footnote. Which of the following provides a general overview of a text? The answer is an introduction. 
An introduction introduces a text. It provides a broad picture of the text, including possible chapters and arguments, and it's in the beginning of the book. An appendix provides additional data, charts, and tables, and is located in the back of the text. And a glossary is an alphabetized list of words used in the book and is typically located in the back of a text. A footnote is extra information that gives context to the main text. It's typically at the bottom of the page and marked by a superscript or a little extra number that's in small print and up. These types of TEAS questions were more prevalent on the previous version of the test, the TEAS 6 that was used between 2016 to 2022. You may see this on the TEAS 7. You may not. You may see this as an unscored question. It's good to know this information, especially as you continue your college career. And in my TEAS prep program, I have a full downloadable guide of all these terms and definitions. It's a quick win for memorization. But let me know, did you see a question like this on the TEAS? And what advice did you give your fellow students? Question nine, which of the following is least likely to appear in a fairy tale? Choose one best answer. A, personification. B, dialogue, C, outside evidence, D, sequential organization. Which of the following is least likely to appear in a fairy tale? The answer is C, outside evidence. This is a very easy question where on the T's you might read quickly and miss least likely. It's a very common trap because you'll be like, oh, which of the following is likely to appear in a fairy tale? Personification, A, go, move on, done. And you would get that wrong. This is a question where time pressure and quick reading could cause you to miss an answer. Fairy tales are narrative stories. Personification would likely appear in a fairy tale as a narrative. It involves giving an inanimate object human qualities. Dialogue or people speaking is very common in narrative passages, uh, which a fairy tale would be a type of narrative passage or a story. Option C is correct. Fairy tale would not support its claim with facts and research. It's just telling a story and it's probably not true. Narratives often have sequential organization with a beginning, middle, and end because they often begin with once upon a time, setting a scene back in time. Question 10. Which of the following best identifies the author's purpose in the passage? Choose one best answer. A, to describe. B, to entertain. C, to inform. D, to persuade. Author's purpose questions can often be about a word, a sentence, an example, or the entire passage. This one's about the entire passage, so let's read it. The deck was a beautiful addition to the house. The dark stain absorbed the sunlight, so the deck warmed quickly in the morning. Leafy vines framed the back wall, which gave the deck a sense of nature in the city environment. Redolent flowers around the perimeter created an inviting smell. The answer is... A to describe. So what type of supporting examples are used in this passage? It focuses on physical details and references the five senses. That means it's a descriptive passage. We have... It felt warm, what you can see with the leafy vines, and then flowers that created an inviting smell. So if it's all about the five senses, odds are it's descriptive. It's not entertaining because it's not evoking emotions or telling a story. Entertain is a good guess, but describe is the best answer there. It's not an informative passage. It is telling you about a deck. However, it's not using facts and research. And because it's reliance on the five senses, describe is the better option. It's not a persuasive passage because there's no strong call to action. The author isn't trying to change the reader's mind or get them to do anything or believe a certain way. So the five senses go with describe. All right, and that concludes this practice test. I'll do another one soon. You can go check out my website, prenursingsmarter.com, for more practice tests or to get this full exam bank. You'll see you have five full practice exams, and each of these practice exams follows the exact breakdown of question types you'll see on the T's, and you'll have them for reading, math, science, and English, as well as randomized question banks and more helpful review.
Keep up the great work with your Tease Prep, and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Take care.